Hi guys, it's Aerostuff FPV here, proud to present the Silver Shadow UAV, which is an easy to build twin boom platform that will stay airborne for an hour or more with a regular 5000 mAh 4 cell LiPo. But of course, having greater potential if replaced with lithium ions or bigger batteries. So the aircraft we are going to build resembles a stable aerial platform for flying waypoint missions for FPV or industrial purposes, like flying the waypoints with surveying cameras or mapping cameras for scanning fields or residential areas. But in my case, it's used as a medium range FPV observer that can do long range with a little swap in receivers. It's also a perfect platform for digital FPV flyers as well. It has a default wingspan of 1.6 meters and it weighs 1.5 kilograms only, including my battery. I decided to add these beacon lights on the aircraft because I'm planning to get an FPV night camera like the Foxair Cat 2 or 3 for late evening flights or night sessions in the upcoming summer, so the beacons are in my customization of the UAV. Click on the top right corner to check out how I made this easily possible with cheap car lights and LED controllers for less than $5. So moving on, I'd like to acknowledge people who have supported my work since my latest VTAIL build, which are Rob Talbot, Jim Callen, Jim Thompson, Amel Carr, Andrade, and there's a person called Someone. I'd like to take this minute to thank each one of them very much for their donations because they supported me build this aircraft right here because affording FPV gear as a full-time student isn't as cheap and easy anymore. So this aircraft and build video wouldn't be here until the near future or so if it wasn't for these guys. So again, thank you guys so much and I really do appreciate it. And if you guys would like to support my work as well because I'm preparing a solar powered FPV design very soon there is a yellow icon on the channel page that directs you to this website and gets you to know my particular page. Feel free to check it out and know that each donation is acknowledged in future videos and helps me purchasing new FPV gear and other stuff to start designing the next aircraft. So I think that's enough for the intro about this aircraft and the support that I got from you guys. So let's start building the Silver Shadow UAV. Enjoy! Here you see the overview of my electronics, but you are entitled to use your own electronics and customize it the way you want. But if you want to have the same hardware and electronic gear as I have, I have links in the comment section and in the description for you to check out and order as well. And here are the primary materials, which are foam board, Depron, plastic cards and two 650 millimeters carbon tubes, which are 10 millimeters thick. So we're using the experimental airlines techniques to form every part of the aircraft. So with the center pod, I'm using the fuselage building technique. So the first thing that you saw me do was tape the outside. And then now you see me cutting halfway through the foam board on the uh, folding corners. And in a sec, you'll see me use a ruler to widen uh, the halfway made cut into the foam board. And that is for my particular type of foam board because the paper is not removable. So the full will be harder so this is my solution to make it easier and after I've done this I am folding it with my hands and sometimes use uh, the ruler uh, to form it into its final shape so here you're seeing me taping some strips on the underside to you know have it into its final shape because we're gonna glue a strip to the inside to join the two corners together for good and again, this is done with the experimental airlines techniques. So that's why I have linked a video on the top right corner for you to check out. So after being done with the central pod, we're going to start on the central wing. So again, this is with the experimental airlines techniques and there's another link on the top right to check out how to make the experimental airlines wings, the arm and wings, because the central wing we're going to build is an arm and wing. So after taping the outside of the uh, wing, we're going to glue the strips in place and I'm using Depron as the strips to form the airfoil. Thank you. 
And so right now you guys can see that I'm kind of deviating from the original or default arm and wing structure. And that is because I'm taking a third strip and I am cutting it in half in its width. And what I'm going to do is place the spar in the middle and then use these two uh, halfway cut strips to be glued on top of each other. So what this will result in is a new kind of airfoil. And I think it's a more efficient version because the downgoing surface is enlarging on the same kind of arm and wing that I've always built. And then here you see me glue the top surface of the internal strips after placing or pre-placing, you know, the aileron cables. And then here you can see me finishing the arm and wing and this is the final result of the middle wing section. So we're making the horizontal stabilizer now and you guys have seen the dimensions and there is a section which is going to be folded and which is going to be adding structural integrity to the tail section. And as you guys can see here I'm adding hot glue to you know the internal surface. Uh, after it being finished I'm going to glue the two carbon tubes on the edges. And after I've glued those on the edges, um, the tail section looks good and it's very strong. And this is where the plastic cards come in because these are going to be glued in these particular locations, you know, the sections where the tape is removed and the paper as well for the upcoming stabilizers, the vertical stabilizers to help them stay up at all times. So this is going to be the location for the middle wing to be glued on the central pod and that is 23 centimeters from the very edge of the nose. And as you guys can see I have temporarily taped the booms on the middle wing because I'm trying to align and get the middle wing as straight as possible on the central pod. So now you're seeing the section of me adding glue to the underside of the middle wings with the paper exposed to glue the booms in place. And the distance of, you know, the two exposed parts on the middle wing are the same as the length of the horizontal stabilizer. So this has not been shown on the footage because I think I deleted it, but I also added plastic cards to reinforce the booms which were glued on the underwing to, you know, keep their place and, you know, not fall apart in flight. So after everything has been finished, I'm uh, preparing, you know, the servos, glue them in place and run a cable through the inside of one of the booms for the aileron cable. And when I was done with that, I started on the outer wings. We 
Here are the dimensions for the outer wing and the differences. It's actually the same procedure as the middle wing, but the material is from Depron. So after being done with the outer wings, I only had to install the servos, you know, run the wires through the inside of them, you know, get the control linkages and control horns to be in their place and, you know, do the rest on the aircraft. So that means, you know, elevator, servo and the control horns and linkage, and then, you know, install the flight controller, do some configuring in the configurator on PC, and I'm using iNav. And then it was up to, you know, doing the final touches, like adding a nose cone, um, smoothing up the aircraft and loading up the battery and, you know, get ready for the maiden flight. So after being done with the nose cone, I just did the finishing touches and added the FPV gear to the aircraft and did some configuring in the flight controller and added the GPS, did some finishing touches and got ready for the made of flight in as little as two days. That was literally it. This aircraft made from the mind up has flown it's made in flight in two days. And that just shows you how quick you can build these serious looking type of UAVs within as little as two days um, realistically. If I had these two days free, it was finished in one day and the next day would be it's made in flight. And if I have to talk about the stability of my particular build is that it doesn't need any tuning in PID or PIFF values coming from the flight controller. I literally, you know, pre gain the aircraft in its generic airplane configuration in INAV and that is about it. The aircraft does return to home flawless, did the waypoint mission flawless as you guys saw in the intro and you know that was about it for the aircraft and I think I'm you know confident enough to get this aircraft to fly medium to long range waypoint missions on its own because it's already very stable in its nature and its twin boom pusher nature and if I have to tune it a bit more it will fly pin perfect waypoint missions. So that is about it for this video. If you guys would like to see more build videos, check out my channel, watch my videos, support my work as well with leaving a like and positive comment in the comment section. And yeah, keep it safe and I'll see you guys in the next video.